Stayallday.com. Stay now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative, which is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques, all underneath the umbrella of one unified philosophy that is called Work on Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is, we are getting into part two of five, this five-part series that is titled, How You Need to Be Using AI, Artificial Intelligence, in Your Business, not now, but right now. Now, I've already given my introduction to this, so first let me just give you a couple points. We'll get right to where we need to pick, pick it up where we left off, which is my text number, 305-384-6894. It's free to join my text community. I send out a daily motivation every day, Monday motivation every week. Text me. It's free of charge. We'll tell you your options as soon as you hit me up. Number two, work on your game university. That's the only place I do any coaching. If you would like to be coached by me directly, that's the only place I do it. That's the only way to get it. Go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. The link is down below in the description along with the message with the number to get into my test community on it out the way let's pick up right where we left off yesterday we were on point number four and what we are talking about here is ways that you need to be using ai also known as artificial intelligence or artificial intelligence also known as ai how you need to be using this in your business and you can be doing this right now these things are happening under your nose right now if you didn't know number four website design and customization now i know as i told you yesterday there are some people who have entire businesses based around website design and customization. There's some of you who offer website design and customization as part of the uh, suite of services that people have access to when they join your, your program or your consultancy or whatever it may be. Listen, AI is coming for you. AI is coming for that offer. All right, AI is going to take that from under your nose unless you do what I'm going to tell you in point number and part number five of this series. Now, how many of you listen to this is not a graphic designer, meaning you are not you are not by trade a graphic designer. And how you know you're not a graphic designer, meaning you have never had anyone pay you to design graphics, all right? Any of you who has never charged money and been paid to design graphics, that means you're not a graphic designer. However, although you're not a graphic designer, you have created graphics for your own website or logos for any of your business, or you've done any type of design work for your own business in the past. How many of you fit that description? Where both things are true. You're not a graphic designer, but you have done graphic design for your own business. How many of you have done this before? Okay, all of you who is nodding your head and those of you who are too shy to admit it, and listen, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs, so don't fucking lie. I know. All right, 90% of you are guilty of this. Stop doing it. All right, stop designing your own graphics because many of you suck. Many of you are really, 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 really bad at graphic design. I can tell when an entrepreneur designs their own graphics because they look like shit. I can tell when you design your own website because it looks like shit. It's garbage. And I'm able to say this to you. I would, I would say this to you before. I actually said this on, on a show probably like three years ago maybe four years ago, that I knew some entrepreneurs who designed graphics. There's a, a friend of mine. I know her name. I'm not going to say her name here. She had designed a logo that was, uh, well, she sent it to me and said, what do you think of this? I said, who designed this logo? She said, I did. I said, are you a graphic designer? And I noticed she's not a graphic designer. She works in the, the health and wellness, mental health space, mindfulness, stuff, stuff like that. So I knew she wasn't a graphic designer. I was asking the question as a setup. And she knew it was a setup. She giggled a little bit. And she said, no, I'm not a graphic designer. I said, I can tell. This is garbage. This looks, like, this looks terrible. And many of you entrepreneurs, I would say the same thing to you if you showed me your shit that you make. I know many entrepreneurs who make a lot of shit because you are going on Canva and you're logging into, uh, what's the other one called? Photoshop. And you're trying to make graphics and you have no idea what the hell you're doing and you should never have been there in the first place. Put the mouse down. We all got a Canva. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Stop designing your own graphics. Even if you need to hire a human for this, you should hire a human. All right, it's worth the price and to save time from you doing it. These days, AI is doing it. AI can design a website. AI can build a website for you. Yes, yes, yes. This is real. AI can make you a website. It can design logos. It can design graphics. You don't have to be using any apps on your phones. So any type of visual presentation that you are using to represent your business, whatever it may be, you no longer need to do it. All right. You are fired from the job of graphic design if you are not by trade a graphic designer. Does everyone, does everybody hear what I just said? I want to make sure I'm being clear. I don't want to see any more graphic design tragedies committed by you entrepreneurs who should be out there coaching or training or writing books or consulting or giving speeches. 
that you are on fucking Canva designing graphics that look terrible because you have no idea what the hell you're doing because you think you have no better options. You got better options. Okay, now that that's out the way. There's AI software that can build websites and design graphics and make logos for you right now, today. And here's the key. It does all of this better than you. It does it faster than you. And based on how much an hour of your time may be worth versus how much you would pay to use this software, cheaper than you. So it's better than you in every way. You have no advantages, zero. It's better than you in everything. All right, it beats you in every single category, the AI software. So this is a no-brainer of a decision. If you are not a graphic designer, no more designing, no more website design. I don't want to see it. I do not want to see any more of these crimes against graphic design committed by you entrepreneurs who insist on designing your own stuff. And it looks like you insisted on designing your own stuff. See, if somebody can tell that you design your own stuff and you're not a designer, then that means it's trash. And you go, let that, sit, let that space sit there. And I want that space in there, that five seconds of space, leave that right there because I, I need everybody to let that one sink in. If I can tell that you designed your own logo, you design your own graphics, and you are not a graphic designer, that means it's trash. If I look at it and my first question is, who designed this? That means it's trash. If anybody else looks at it and their first question is, who designed this? That means it's trash. If you have any honest people in your life, let me add that as a caveat. Now, if you've got a bunch of yes people in your life who just tell you what you want to hear because it makes you feel good, then what they say doesn't count. You need to talk to somebody like me who will tell you the truth. And I will tell you the truth. If your graphics look like trash, I will tell you to look like trash. I'm telling you right now. And I've seen way too many tragedies all right, based on non-designers doing design work. Okay, so all of you can start doing this right now. It's already here and it's only going to get better. The thing with artificial intelligence, folks, is a lot of it is based on being able to assess what already exists. We have a lot of written words out there. That's why text is so quick. Text came so quickly. When it comes to graphic design, website design, logo design, there are a ton of websites and good looking graphics and good looking logos and good looking websites out there. Therefore, AI can learn what good design looks like. It's not going to use your website, but it can know, learn what good design looks like and it can make a website for you that looks way better than that shit that many of you have been out there producing and holding it up as if it's quality just because you did it. No, it's not. It's trash. All right, the longer something has been around, again, in real life, the easier AI is able to mimic it. Again, that's why text is coming first. Graphic design is going to come very quickly. Video is going to be hardest simply because it's harder for it to learn video. And it takes a lot of computing power to learn video. But graphic design is very close to text and that it will figure this one out really, really quick. Moving on, point number four, today's topic. Once again, we are talking well, how you need to be using artificial intelligence in your business right now. Number five, task automation. Now, task automation is not brand new. And AI did not invent this. This is something that already existed before we even had AI. Uh, an example of this is an app like Zapier. And if you're familiar with Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R. What Zapier does is that it basically plugs in, it plugs one app to another app, two apps that may not necessarily ever communicate. So if I was using, let's say I use an app like Nutshell as my CRM, which I do, and I use an app like ClickFunnels for uh, collecting email addresses and getting people to sign up for my funnels and making sales, which I also do. ClickFunnels and Nutshell do not necessarily cooperate with each other. There's no plugin in Nutshell that says, hey, if you use ClickFunnels, put your API code in here and vice versa for ClickFunnels. However, Zapier is able to allow those two apps to communicate with each other. So it's basically like the glue is the middleman that connects those two apps and allows them to communicate smoothly between each other. Now, again, Zapier is not necessarily AI. It's already been out. It's not new. Zapier is, is software. But what AI is going to do is put apps like Zapier on steroids. So this is why you need to be figuring out what tasks need to be automated that you are doing manually right now and figure out how a Zapier-like AI software can do it for you. So a task automation can be something as simple as an email autoresponder, which is also known as a follow-up sequence. In other words, emails that just come out rapid fire, one after another, after another, after another, two people in your email list, that's an email autoresponder. So any of you who's on my email list, many of the emails that I send out are part of my autoresponder process, but not all of them. Some of them I send manually, some of them are part of the process. Most of the time you don't know the difference because they all look exactly the same. But I have email sequences that can take a whole bunch of emails and just send them out. So a task automation can do something like set this up a lot faster. It can integrate other tasks in the process, such as sending a text message, tagging a person, 
reaching out on social media. So let's say, for example, I sent an email to you today and you didn't open the email. So my software knows that you did not open the email. So I can put in the task automation that anyone who doesn't open this email after two hours, send them a follow up email and say, hey, just bumping this to the top of your inbox to make sure you saw this email. And they'll have the email that you didn't open. It could also send a text message to you and say, hey, Mike, you didn't open the email that I sent this morning. Just want to make sure you got it and give you a link to the email, a web based link to the email. It can also know all your social media accounts because it can just track that through your name or your email address. And I can send you a DM or an at reply on, on Twitter or a DM on Instagram or a private message on Facebook and say, hey, you didn't open the email that I sent today. Hey, I just want to give you the link to it just to make sure you caught it. All right, there's task automation AI that is doing this and will be doing this really well. It could even, even check this out, call you on the phone and have my voice, because I'm the one who wrote the email and say, hey, Mike, this is Dre Baldwin, just giving you a call, let you know I put a new email out today. You didn't open it, just want to make sure you got it. I'm going to follow up this voicemail with the text message with the link to that email that you didn't open already. This is happening right now. They could do other things like send shipments, automate and send shipments. Uh, some of you have staff members and assistants who currently do tasks like this for you. Right, you should show them this software that is doing this stuff. Let them know that they need to step their skills up or risk being replaced by the software. All right, it doesn't matter. You can tell them. You can tell them. All right, I told my assistant. I've had more than one conversation with her letting her know, like, hey, there's AI software that can do this better than you did it. You keep making a human error. All right, software doesn't make human errors. So you better stop making mistakes. I told her that. And sometimes when she's made mental errors, over here in the work on your game world, we don't accept mental errors. I, I don't mind skill errors. If you just don't have a skill, that's okay. If you don't make a mental mistake, which is just a lack of focus, a lack of paying attention, those I don't tolerate. Good news, AI software never makes those kind of mistakes. Never. All right, everybody with me? And in part five, I'm going to explain that in way more detail. Point number six. Today's topic, again, we are on part two of five ways that you need to be using AI in your business right now. Number six, content curation so we talked about content creation this is content curation now i've seen a few people do the following on their websites like they'll have a many people's websites have a search box so you can search for a certain topic or a certain thing that you ever posted about and now so i've seen this on um, tim ferris's website seen this on seth godin's blog that you can type in a subject and any content that they have created that is related to that subject will come up in the search result and that's not necessarily new. It's a little bit faster now than the old search boxes, but that's not necessarily new. But I'm looking forward to this tool being able to do things like search through audio files and video files. That's the next wave of search. Current wave of search is that the only thing search can do is look for text. So for example, this episode where I have, I'm talking about ways that you can use AI in your business right now. The only thing that a search, uh, bot can index index just means it records that this exists so if someone was to look up how to use AI on my business right now this episode might come up in the search results because that's the title of the episode but the actual things that i'm saying within the context of this episode so if i say something like if someone searches zapier or someone was to search or was something else that i've said in today's episode sending a text message to follow up with an email link those things I said in the audio, but they're not in the title of the video, nor, nor may they be listed in the description of the episode. The index, the search index would never even know that I said those things, even though I did. Because search bots cannot search through audio files yet. Search bots cannot search through video files yet. Let's say that it was a, if someone was to search, I want to see a video of a guy sitting at a desk with a black suit on the pink shirt and a black tie in front of a bookshelf. There's no way that the search bots could figure that out as of today's current technology. But I believe in the next 10 to 15 years, and it'd probably be faster than that, let's say the next five to 10 years, that search bots will be able to do this. Meaning if someone was to look up pink shirt, black tie, black suit in front of a bookshelf, talking into a microphone, that the search bot would pull my video as one of the results because that's exactly what I'm wearing. I don't have that written in the description. It's not written in the title but it will be able to read the video, note what I look like, look at the search prompt, and be able to pull this video up because it is a reflection of what the person searched. That is coming. And let me let you all know something. When that happens, <laughs> when that happens, that is going to turn the SEO world upside down, first of all. It's gonna change SEO. It was a big deal. There are many people who have entire businesses based on SEO. It's gonna change their entire business. 
for better or worse, depending on how far ahead of the curve they are. Hopefully they're listening to the show so they understand this. It's going to change advertising. It's going to change keyword researching. And it's going to change the content game. Because now the content that will matter is going to be triple. Because everyone who's making video and audio right now, the only way that video and audio matters is based on what you title the video and audio. But what's going to now matter is everything in the video and in the audio. It means everything you said, everything you did, everything we can see, every single word mentioned, all of that is going to be part of the search engine process now. All of it will could possibly come up in SEO. So you won't even have to be as good at doing quote unquote SEO as we used to be. Now, the SEO will basically do it for you. So this is going to be a, a challenge or a boon to people who work in SEO, depending on how they respond to knowing that this is coming. Anyone who works in SEO should already know this is coming. And when it comes, like this is going to be huge. It's going to be huge for people like myself who create a lot of audio and a lot of video. I create a lot of textual material as well. But people who create a lot of audio and video and don't write at all, they're going to start to matter in SEO searches in a way that they don't matter at all right now because of this. So I hope I'm not going over you all's heads and helping you understand what's about to happen. All, right, all of this is coming within the next five to 10 years. And again, it's not even there yet. So when I told you yesterday, we're in the top of the first inning here. This is why y'all need to get in the game right now, because uh, this is going to change everything for people who understand it. You don't have to be an expert. You just got to understand it and know how to use it. And in this five part series, I'm going to explain how to use this. So content creators who don't have a lot of written content, but you have audio and video, i.e. YouTubers and podcasters. SEO is going to start to matter for you when this happens. Because now it can read what's in your video. It can read what you're wearing. It can read every single word that you said. That's going to change. It's going to shift the landscape of content creators. So if you got a thousand episodes of your audio show, 500 videos on YouTube, but you haven't written anything, now people will be able to find you through search in a way that they can't find you right now. This is going to change the advertising game. It's going to change the social media game. It's going to change the coaching and consulting industries. And I've seen software that teases the ability to do this, but it's not on point just yet. Again, I, I keep using that word, not yet. And again, I give this, it might even be in three years. And this might happen in three years because right now, what uh, many uh, softwares can do is it can easily transcribe material. So I use a service called Rev and I can plug in a 30 minute audio, hit the button and it does a, uh, with is about a was maybe about eighty to ninety percent accuracy, can transcribe everything that I said, and I get an email back within about two minutes for thirty minutes of audio. Thirty minutes of audio is transcribed by an AI software bot in two minutes. No human can do it that fast. Now, even if I was to ask for the human transcript, that would take a little bit longer, and it would be ninety nine percent accurate. AI is learning with every single human transcript how to better its AI transcript to where the AI at 80% accuracy and humans at 99% accuracy, AI is working to close that gap to where the AI transcript will be just as accurate as the human transcript. And all those human transcribers, they don't be out of a job unless they know how to do something else. This is where it's going, folks. I'm not making this up. It's not my idea. It's not my decision. This is just where it's going. So this, that's why I'm making this episode to help you all wake up to what's happening here. And I've seen software that teases this, but again, not there yet. Next three to five years is coming. That said, let me recap these three points here. And tomorrow we'll go into the next section. We are talking things you should be using in your business with AI slash artificial intelligence right now. Number four, website design and customization. Those of you who have been doing graphic design and you have no business doing graphic design, you are fired, quit, stop. Let the AI do it for you. Number five, task automation. This is something that you can already have set up in your business, but AI is going to make this a lot faster, a lot more ubiquitous, and it will involve a lot more platforms than it does right now. And number six, content curation. This is going to change SEO. It's going to change search. It's going to change advertising. It's going to change the game for content creators, especially those of you who don't have a lot of written material out there, but you have a lot of video and audio because all of that's going to start to matter in SEO in ways that it, which right now it does not matter because it can't index what you said, what you look like, you know, the voices that you use, the actual words inside the audio. It can't index that yet. But there's coming a time where we'll be able to in index all of that and index it accurately to where oh, the game is going to change in ways that y'all won't even believe. But you should believe because I'm telling you right now, so it shouldn't be a surprise to any of you when it happens. All that said, make sure you text me to my text community. My number is 305-384-6894 and work on your game university. That's the only place you can be coached by me, the only place I do any coaching. Tomorrow we're going to go into part seven 
eight and nine of this series. And then we're going to talk about what are the things that are coming in AI in the next part of the series, part four, what are coming in AI and then what you should do if AI is threatening your career or your business or your job. Right now, we're going to talk about that over the next three episodes of this show. So make sure you work on your game. I will talk to you tomorrow. Work on your game. Dre, all.